about all of this by myself. I didn't have another camera up, I didn't have anybody else. This was just something I've really been wanting to try to see what are the limitations that I can fully reach with just myself. How much can I possibly do? Now I know what you're probably already thinking. Will, how did you do that opening shot by yourself? It just so happens that the Ronin S has a tracking mode on it. I would highly suggest that you go ahead and get a Ronin S so that you can start doing these amazing tracking shots like I just did in this all by myself. All I hit was the record button, I, I tracked them all out on the app, hit record, and it walks it through it. As you can see, I'm playing with my phone in the beginning, I was just hitting start on the Ronin basically. So I didn't have a storyline yet, so I did what I normally do. I went to Epidemic Sound, which is where I get all my music from. Started looking for inspiration, came up with a nice track. I want something short, nothing too crazy, just because I knew it was going to take a lot of time to shoot by myself. I had so many tracking shots with the Ronin that just didn't work. I eventually nailed it and got the shot I wanted, but it does take a while. Picked up these glasses from a place called City Trends, a little local fashion-y place here in uh, Daytona. I already had this coat from Goodwill, and so I, I couldn't even tell you what my character is. I, I think I'm a professor. I really did not work on the backstory that extensively. I am sorry for all my screenwriters out there. You know I'm talking about you. But that's basically uh, that's basically it, guys. Uh, that's the short film. It is what it is. And I do feel like I had to rush some things with the lighting towards the end just because I really wanted to use a lot of natural light just because Again, I'm by myself. I do have some LEDs I brought in just to add in some fill and a little bit of a you know kicker on the face. But towards the end, I started losing all my natural light, rely solely on those LEDs. And I do feel like that changed the tone just a touch, but it's a short little film for a vlog. And I thought I would just show it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and the behind the scenes of it. Oh, one last thing. This was all shot on vintage glass, by the way, guys except for one shot, this shot. That I shot on my Sigma 16 millimeter just because I, that room is super small and I needed something really wide and all I had was a 50 and a 35 and the 35 was not wide enough. This is an F1.2 uh, Canon FD lens from the like 80s I, think, I believe. And this is a same uh, Canon FD lens, 35 millimeter F 2.5, very odd, I know, but like, look at that, look at that, that's ridiculous. And then just that, just a little 2.5. Uh, most of the shots were all done with uh, this. Uh, some of the shallow depth of field shots were all done with the 50. Uh, but yeah, uh, those were the lenses that I used. And the camera that I used was just a cheap little Sony A5100. Uh, the lenses were adapted. And that is the camera setup right here, guys. This is. This is it. The reason why I picked this camera was just because as a flip out screen, it was easier to frame myself than some of these shots. Uh, the A6500 doesn't have that, and I really didn't want to deal with the FS5 because it's way too big. That is uh, the end of today, guys, and I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. That's not going to work because they're clear. I had to keep pulling this jacket down because it's really short on me. But like if you do this, you kind of shrug a bit, the shirt from the inside, you're fine.